G'day, it's Pete here, and I'm back for day three of the World Bridge series, bringing all the action from the first round of the knockouts, the round of 32. Anyway, uh, let's jump in. There's lots of games to choose from, but what better way to start with than the Australasian team, Team Hans playing against Team Canada. Uh, so here I wanted to start things off a little bit slowly and just look at a part score battle that I found pretty interesting here. So uh, for starters here, I went pass pass and Wibbly here has six spades and they've got a choice of do they pass, do they open one spade or do they open two spades? Like you've got six spades, you've got a weak hand, but you are in third seat. So it's not a traditional op one spade opening. Um, so for me, it's between one spade and two spades. Um, the third seat aspect of it makes opening one spade um, seem quite appealing. Uh, two spades would take away more space, uh, but give the opponents a more apt description of your hand. When you open one spade, it's a lot harder for them to gauge do you actually have genuine strength or not. Anyway, I uh, went one spade and south here has a 13 count, but with length in spades, no real appropriate bid. You might see some people making a takeout double here, um, but usually you'd want four hearts if you're a four triple three. Pass is the textbook bid. So they passed and I went one no trump. And now North, who was a passed hand, came in with a takeout double here. And uh, their hand's as good as it can be uh, for being a passed hand. And East could bid two spades, but just pass just to see where, uh, where it'd go. And here South jumped to three diamonds, which I actually find a little bit strange with just a four card diamond suit. They've got lots of points, but their partner's a passed hand. I don't really see where they're going. Um, my thoughts would be bid two diamonds and then try and compete again later if the opponents keep bidding. Um, but they chose three diamonds and three diamonds was pretty comfortable. Um, and uh, here, got diamond lead, which picked up the queen. West has a bit of an awkward hand to lead from. Uh, you could consider spade from queen doubleton. Uh, but here, with south jumping to three diamonds as a passed hand after their partner opened one spade, what they usually have is quite a good spade suit sitting over your partner. Um, so I think this is a good reason to try and avoid the spade lead. Your unsupported ace doesn't look great. I think it's between a club and a diamond for me. A diamond just looks pretty passive, but it picks up your partner's queen. So they go ahead and draw trumps and uh, then they start working on hearts and they duck a couple of rounds and then they take the ace trying to cut communication, but there's still the ace of spades there. And because they've got timing to uh, get rid of uh, something on the queen of hearts, they rush into clubs to try and get whatever club tricks you can, hoping that uh, your partner's got ace king. Uh, but the ace wins and that's that. So 10 tricks made there. At the other table, uh, here it went similar. One spade opening, not the two spade opening. Uh, and no trump. And North didn't make the takeout double. So I really like the takeout double here. So I'm wondering why they opted not to. And then it went two spades and then they just defended there. Um, you could also consider a takeout double the second time, but there's no guarantee of an east-west fit. You are vulnerable against not. You don't necessarily want to just commit yourself to the three level. But I am slightly surprised that there was no action here. Um, that being said, uh, two spades can be beaten on the hand. Um, and the defense starts off with a spade to the ace. And they shifted to a heart. And like I, one thing here. Look how terrible this hand is to lead from. Leading away from Jack's third spade, not particularly appealing, but these holdings, the King Jack holdings and all the other suits, you just don't want to lead any of them. This is like, I really, I would really prefer you to be on lead there, partner. Um, but they let a spade, which kind of picks up your spade trick. So the Jack doesn't really hold much weight anymore, but they switch to hearts and keep going with hearts. And uh, De Clara goes in with the ace of clubs and then tries to set up clubs. Now, at this stage, uh, they can actually beat um, two spades. If you play three rounds of diamonds, making West rough, uh, then uh, the jack of spades becomes a trick again. Now, it's worth mentioning here, again, because of the one spade opening, rather than just opening two spades, it's really hard for South to place where the ace of diamonds is. 
And leading a diamond from here could easily be giving away extra tricks. So they don't know if the heart's necessarily standing up or not, uh, but it goes heart and they're rough. And then Declara just uh, plays a couple of clubs and makes eight tricks. So Team Canada started off with a, a solid set here and picked up plus 17 imps. There's actually quite a bit of action here, but I just wanted to highlight the sort of small intricacies in the part score battles that also do add up. Uh, let's move into uh, stanza two of a different match. And here we have Bridge for Business versus South Sweden. And I thought this was a really interesting hand uh, for a convention that you don't see come up too often. Uh, but they had the auction go a diamond, two clubs, three diamonds, five no trumps, uh, which is like a grand slam try basically saying, how good are your trumps? I want to try and bid grand slam if you've got good trumps. And South's like, I have the good trumps. I have exactly what you are looking for. So I reckon this is a nice clean auction through to seven diamonds. And the reason you've got this five no trump bid is if you go through Roman key card, you don't really get the answer you want because you don't care about the ace of spades. So if you use Roman key card, you'd be, you'd find out you're off a key card and you wouldn't be sure is it the ace of diamonds, the king of diamonds, the ace of spades. And if you can't differentiate that out, then it's really hard to bid Grand Slam. So a nice, clean, quick auction to Grand Slam. At the other table, a lot of excitement as well. So it went one diamond, one spade, two clubs, four spades. So here, West only has seven points, but again, they're not vulnerable. So aggressive one level overcalls can work out pretty well here. So they got in and bid their one spade, uh, which actually helped out a lot on the auction. So after the two club bid, four spades, South bid five diamonds. And at this stage, North knows that, well, what can partner have for a one diamond, five diamond bid other than really good diamonds? And they bid seven clubs uh, and South was like, I know my diamonds are good enough. I can bid seven diamonds. And this went back around to East, who's got five card support, no defensive tricks and uh, trust their vulnerable opponents and bid seven spades, a grand slam sacrifice, but a very handy pickup versus the grand slam making. So uh, the score from this match is Bridge for Business picked up seven imps over there. There was sort of back and forth throughout it, uh, but uh, Bridge for Business has a 33 imp lead after the second stanza over South Sweden. Moving into round number three. And here we've got Pericolo versus Robinson. So here I just wanted to highlight a board where you might not think it happens at high level bridge and it only happens uh, at lower levels, but they bid to a slam missing two aces. So here the ace of spades and ace of hearts are off, but this is a pretty competitive auction. So one club, one spade, Zia gets in and bids two hearts, four spades taking away a lot of space. And uh, Gold doesn't want to let them play uh, just in four spades, bids on to five clubs. And uh, from Zia's perspective, if your partner can bid one club and five clubs, if they've got something like ace king to six clubs and another ace, whether it be spades or hearts, six clubs looks like a really good contract and you don't have room to investigate. So in spots like this, you want to visualize typical hands partner might have. And here, the C stand's fine, but it's one of the more minimum ones that uh, doesn't actually work out. So I think six clubs was a good bet, um, but uh, misses today because the opponents can take the first two spades. But not to worry, it was duplicated at the other table. This highlights that a slam missing two aces at the highest level of bridge happens and it's a flat board. So here the one spade, four spade bid takes away space. Here worth mentioning that West got in with three spades, which may have just been a club raise to start with, which does sway what sort of information they've got. Uh, not totally sure what their three spade bid is. And uh, it, I suppose it might be able to show heart somewhere, but I don't, don't really see I haven't seen that sort of convention. Um, and I'd be surprised that West isn't showing their hearts in some fashion here. Uh, but uh, going on to six clubs and down one for a flat board. But uh, taking a look at the score, Robinson is up 25 imps after three stanzas, 108 to 83. And then let's check out the fourth stanza of the day. 
And here we've got uh, Corman Belgium versus the world champions Zimmerman. So let's see what's happening here. So going into the final stanza, uh, this is partway through it. Zimmerman's up a bit. They're up by nine imps. Not a lot, still lots of action to come. So here, uh, here North South bid one no trump and then their two heart bid. Uh, they're clearly not playing a transfer to spades. They're playing something else, but looks like they've shown four spades and probably an invitational hand. I'm not precisely sure what sort of no trump range they're playing, but opposite a 15 to 17 point range, I would expect this north south hand to typically show a game force. It's a relatively reasonable nine count, ace, king, jack, fourth, all in one one holding here. Uh, but if it was maybe a 14, 16, no Trump, then inviting would seem pretty reasonable. Um, but here they elect to stop in two no Trumps. Uh, three no Trumps can make pretty comfortably. The layouts are very friendly here. Clubs are three, three with the queen on side. King, Jack, Doubleton, Diamond. So your ace, queen, Doubleton opposite three to the 10 is actually three tricks. The spade king is on side. Um, so no trumps takes lots of tricks here. Uh, they play it extremely cautiously here to make eight, but at the other table, uh, a little bit different. So here they got the one no trump, stay in two hearts, and then they bid three no trumps showing the game force with four spades. And here East doubles. And you might be looking at this double going, why did they actually double here? So this double isn't just strictly a penalty double. Usually this is a lead directing double. And what you're typically looking for is a spade lead. And from East's perspective, if their partner leads a spade, their chance of beating three no trumps is much higher than if their partner leads something else. But here, they actually find their partner with a void spade. So the lead directing double doesn't even work because their partner can't lead a spade. And to boot, South redoubles as well. So they know that East is looking for a spade lead, but they've got all the good spade values. Imagine that if North had the decent spades and West actually had a spade to lead, this, the spade lead might really help East West defeat three no trumps. Now, I think there are a couple of drawbacks to doubling here. Firstly, uh, after the stamen and then getting to three no trumps, having six spades really increases the chance partner can have a void here. Uh, but secondly, I think you'd really want like one more good pip, like uh, maybe like the jack of spades or something as well, because partner leading once through spades might not be enough here anyway. Uh, but here, three no trumps redoubled uh, got to make, and they got plus a thousand for making three no trumps redoubled. You don't often see these redoubled contracts, uh, but a handy pickup for Zimmerman in a close match there. And the scorecard here went right down to the wire. So uh, Corman Belgium lost by only three imps to the world champions. After this redoubled uh, contract, they got right back on it. They were still in it, in the hunt, and managed to pick up uh, 19 imps ca to catch up, but not quite enough. And Zimmerman are through. So let's check out the results from all the knockouts. So the uh, Leibowitz team, which were the winners of the round of the Swiss, uh, comfortable victory over the Seoul team there. Uh, AZS uh, had a nice win over Street, who were the runners up in the spin gold. Um, then uh, Bordeletti beat Fleischer here. Uh, nice close match between Venton and ECF holding, uh, with Venton coming out on top. Uh, Wolfson beat Mika Dino pretty uh, comfortably. Uh, this final round was conceded here. Uh, Zamir beat the World Bridge Tour. Team Hans came back from that uh, sluggish opening for a convincing victory over Team Canada. Uh, Robinson uh, beat Periculo. And uh, Nickel had a win over the Black Swan. Bridge for Business, decent win over South Sweden. And here, really, really close match. The Drin team comes up one imp ahead of Team Oddmet. So nice, exciting match there. Uh, we had Lucky Four beating the Formidables. Zimmerman, really close match over Corman, Belgium. And then Minota beating Zaleski. Team Black over Objectivity and Apres Bridge Champs over SPS Echo Rosanka. So they're the results from the round of 32. So see you back tomorrow for more action from the round of 16.